What question do you hate to answer? What's your greatest weakness? I'm applying for a position. Not talking to my arch nemesis. I'm too vague. Can you elaborate? Yeah. I'm too sensitive. Can you elaborate? Jesus Christ I thought this was an interview not an interrogation. What's new? I suddenly feel like the most boring human being on the entire planet when asked this. Perfect opportunity to get all biblical and hopefully scare them away. What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the Sunday. There is nothing new. He explained with a sigh. Tomorrow's the same as the days going by. The future's an echoed repeat of the past. The present's fugacious and fading at last. What is, and what was, and what's going to be. They're one and the same to a person like me. The dated, the fated, the old and the new. They're merging, converging perspectives of view. What's ended's unended. What's done is undone. What's finished's unfinished, and barely begun. There's nothing dividing the now and the then. Okay, said his buddy. I won't ask again. I don't like being asked what I'm doing on the computer. I'm not doing anything. Really, if I were doing something worth talking about I'd tell you, but half the time I'm not even interested in what I'm doing. Plus every time I'm on my phone, who are you texting? Bish, I use my phone for texting like 5% of the time. Do you really want me to explain Reddit to you? How's the job search going? I've been rejected by everyone thanks for reminding me. That's the worst part. It's obviously going poorly because it is still a job search. Might as well be I heard your dad died. How's that going? You can speak Spanish? Is almost always followed by. Say something in Spanish. White guy from Texas problem. I have no formal education in Spanish, but because I grew up constantly exposed to it, I have a bit of a passing functional fluency. Small talk, directions, general communication kind of crap mostly in very Texan Spanglish. The problem is, once people who do actually speak Spanish and didn't know I speak any Spanish find out that I do know a bit they immediately turn the crap up to 100 and go full Univision on me. Slow down, hombre. I said you en poquito. Me too. I'm short and have black hair, so people like to assume I'm Latino. I did learn a little Spanish in high school, 10 years ago, so I found myself having conversations like this. In Spanish. Do you speak Spanish? Me. Also in Spanish. Only a little. Why are you so quiet? Why are you single? Or a variation thereof? My grandma will as are you courting anyone yet, which is in equal parts adorable and annoying. No one wants to hear the real answers when they ask this. Oh you know, just after years of rejections and broken hearts combined with my crippling self-doubt and fear of failure I've had a very hard time approaching anyone I'm interested in. If I know them, I'm terrified of ruining any existing friendships, and if I don't know them, I'll let my social anxiety take over, since I'm uncomfortable talking to strangers. How about you grandma? Have you thought about what dying will be like yet? Holy crap. That question at the end. What's the matter? You look down. When I just have a neutral facial expression. Just say down to frick and start bangra dancing. I don't know what Bangra dancing is, but if it's anything, like I'm imagining this should work 100% of the time. We are a couple in our 30s. Q. When are you having children? A. We can't. A close friend of mine and his wife tried for 5 years and finally succeeded this year, but before that people kept asking them when. Are you going to have a baby? And don't wait too long. The clock's ticking. Knowing full well these two were trying like hell to make it happen. The ultimate slap in the face was his wife's mother. She'd always go out and buy baby clothes that she thought was cute and give it to them. This for when you give us a grandchild. So insensitive because both of them were on the verge of depression or a nervous breakdown facing the potential reality that they can't have kids. And here she is throwing baby gifts in their face and laughing about it. I felt guilty when we accidentally got knocked up. Here are my friends trying for half a decade to have a baby, and then there's us to Neanderthals that were on birth control getting knocked up the second she took an antibiotic for an eye infection. I felt bad in a those two didn't want kids for another few years, and they made it happen. 
while actively trying to prevent it kind of way, it felt like I was slapping them in the face whenever I talked about the pregnancy. Completely understand this. I have a group of friends and we all got married within a couple of years of each other. Everyone had kids except for one couple. They showed up to everyone else's kids birthday parties and bought Christmas gifts for all the kids. It took them 10 years and IVF for them to finally have a child. Everyone was excited with them. Everyone poured gifts on them and their beautiful baby. Their baby ended up getting cancer and dying a couple years later. Never a sadder moment in my life. I have survivor's guilt when I'm around them. Wait, you don't drink? Why not? Every single time. My dad declined the free wine sample at Olive Garden because he's a recovered alcoholic. The waiter was like, come on man, gotta take advantage, free is good. Dude, you're making people uncomfortable. In my experience, Olive Garden waiters are super pushy. Had one try to guilt me into buying desert. Why are you so tall? I don't know, maybe freaking genetics? My dad is 6 feet 6 inches and would always reply with a joke. Jeans. My mother would always buy pants too big for me saying I would grow into them. I think I overdid it. Got tired of not being able to reach the cookie jar as a kid. I'm afraid of the ground. His deadpan delivery really made the jokes. Oh man. Tell your dad I'm stealing his material. How many fingers am I holding up? I'm a grown man and I get this question fairly often whenever I take my glasses off. So I was at the strip club the other day and the dancer comes over, takes my glasses and goes back to dancing on stage. No big deal. She then comes back, puts my glasses on me and requests that I tip her. I refused, she asked why and I told her you stole my glasses, I couldn't see anything. This is an uncle joke, a slight variant of the dad joke. What color is this? What about that? And that? I'm colorblind, and it gets annoying correctly naming the colors that someone points at to test my vision. I always get asked the color of the sky. If I've been told my whole life it's blue, what do you think I'll say? This, the same goes with trees. We all know that the trunk is brown and the leaves are green. Why bother asking us colorblind people what color they are? Anything when the movie is on. Watching TV. Them, what are you doing? Me, mowing the lawn. Who's the woman in your relationship? Neither of us. That's what makes us gay. I don't know. Who's the gay guy in your relationship? Oh, it's definitely her. She's the one who likes dudes. What's your favorite? Every single time, my mind goes completely blank. I cannot for the life of me remember the name of a single movie, book, song, etc. Besides, I hate having to try and pick a favorite anything. I like a lot of different things for a lot of different reasons, and I don't see why I have to choose one thing over another. When I do icebreakers now I ask what's the latest movie you've watched. Then the conversation can go to it was bad because, it was good because, oh I need to see it. How was it? That's a good one. I'm totally stealing it. Why don't you want kids? I just don't. Why does it matter to you? Or, mom, when are you going to give me some grandbabies? Me, probably never. Mom, but honey the most important part of life is having a family. Me, I'm not going to put debt and stress on myself to do something I don't want to do. Besides I like blowing my excess money in Vegas, not on bullcrap on asses and diapers. Mom, well you will change your mind. Me, nope. As someone who let himself get talked into the kids thing, great choice. Having kids is easily the most difficult thing I'll ever do, and I freaking hate it. What are you thinking? No, you're not allowed in my head. I'm not telling you what's happening in here. Plus most of the time it's just something really dumb like imaging George Washington singing about coconuts. Tell me about yourself. How about you just ask me what you want to know? Yes. I always respond with what do you want to know, because I guarantee you're not interested in everything I have to say, just like I'm not that interested in everything you have to say about yourself. This is such a generic, small talk kind of question too. Asking a specific question about someone, even if you just met them, automatically shows at least some genuine interest in the person, rather than tell me about yourself. Just start talking, and don't shut up, until they beg you to stop. 
Don't let them get a word in. Don't let them walk away. Tell them about you. Make them regret it. Not necessarily good advice. Stranger, where are you from? Me, I'm from, current location. Stranger, no, where are you really from? Basically asking why I have a different skin color and what country my parents were born in. I'm a Jew. But where are you from? Jupiter. Careful, it's a gas giant. If you're from Africa why aren't you black? Actual question asked many times. God Karen, you can't just ask people why they aren't black. This is the only correct response to that question. Oh. Well what's his special talent then? He has been diagnosed with autism. This is the most common follow up to learning that he has autism after pity. Family. Strangers. It doesn't seem to matter. I don't damn well know if he has a talent or if he ever will. He's not even 3 yet. The pity always angers me. I explain that it's not just our son who has autism but myself and my husband as well. And autism is not a bad thing. We wouldn't want to be any other way. My father-in-law said, leave him with me for a summer. I'll send you back a whole new boy. I don't want a new kid. I like my kid. Yeesh. My father actually said he could discipline the autism out of my son. Finger quotes and everything. It really hurt because not only was he implying that there was something wrong with him, but also that it was something I was doing wrong. My son is 11 now and more successful in his endeavors than most people. He is smart, loving, imaginative, and funny. He has an awesome personality and is an all-around beautiful human being. I resent people's assumption that autism equals broken slash defective. People with autism are just as capable of being spectacular as anyone else. I respect and admire my son and could not be more proud of who he is. So what makes you unique on those college questionnaires and the like? Even though I'm already in college, I'll probably have to answer such questions again in the future. The truth is, no one thing makes me unique. No one thing makes anyone unique. We are all human. We all have diverse interests and desires. We sometimes we take interest in two completely unrelated things. Sometimes we are very talented in certain areas that many are talented in. Most are talented in a few things that have no bearing on each other. Very few have an accomplishment or an experience that no one ever has before. What makes people unique isn't their traits, it's how those traits combine. When my friend felt sad like a failure, I would try to cheer her up by listing her awesome talents and accomplishments in other things. However, it never felt right, and she would count a row, but a lot of people are good at singing. But a lot of people are good at art, and she was right. But no one is good at singing or drawing like she is because she has her own unique style. People are greater than the sum of their parts. I could put together a human piece by piece until every part was there and it still wouldn't be a person. It'd be a weird amalgamation of parts. But no two living humans are alike because of some indescribable way that their traits and talents and desires come together to make them them to give them their style of doing things. Reducing someone down to just trace fails to capture the whole person. We all know Einstein for his genius in science, but how many know he had depression? We never really knew him at all. We just know his accomplishments. So if you find yourself in a similar dilemma, take heart. No one trait defines you. No one trait makes you unique. You are greater than the sum of your parts. You are unique because all your traits and talents and desires and successes and failures and experiences all come together in a way that no other person has truly experienced before or ever will again. Then try to somehow incorporate that into your answer about maybe your favorite trait or your most apparent or the most out there. Good luck. Copy and paste that into the answer box. Done. Essays and questionnaires aren't trying to trip you up. They're trying to get a snapshot of you. What you just wrote is a perfectly acceptable response to the question, what makes you unique? Are you aware that you are losing your hair? No crap Sherlock. Actually, I already lost it and it's Chad growing back slower than expected. Stupid seasons. How's quitting smoking going? Horrible what do you think? Get away before I eat you or cry. Stop reminding me damn it frick. How's university going please don't ask. Welp. It's a going that's for sure. Fiance. I love you. 
Me, I love you too. Fiance, how much? Me, never mind I don't love you anymore. Fiance, how much? Me, a 20? My kid actually says I love you a hundred thousand. Because that's the biggest thing she can think of. It's pretty cute. When I'm at the airport, and in my pilot uniform, people always ask me if I'm a pilot. I understand if someone is curious about flying and has a follow-up question, or if it's a kid. I'm more than happy to chat for a few moments about anything. On the flip side though I'll have grown adults ask me this question. The exchange usually goes like this. Are you a pilot? Yes. Okay. That's it. Just awkwardness for everyone involved. And I gotta stand there like a dope for professionalism's sake as this yokel just stares back at me. This happens once or twice a week I'd say. Adults have the same curious impulse and probably many of the same questions you get from kids that's why they are school but have been socially indoctrinated out of asking them for fear of being branded nosy or stupid. I bet if after they say okay you said and yes we have a card for naps on long flights or even like I've been flying for X airline for Y years they'd feel authorized to continue the conversation. An unelaborated yes reads as don't keep talking to me. Do you have summer there? I'm from Alaska not a freezer. As a kid in high school absolutely hate when people ask where I want to go to college and what I want to do with my life. I wish I knew the answer though. Is that your real hair? Nope. I shave the heads of naughty children and make my hair out of that. What happened to your arm? Did you break your arm? Or various types of this question. I have cerebral palsy. It's not great. Please leave me alone. Also, please don't try to level with me about your shoulder injury from 5 years ago that still bothers you. It isn't the same thing. I didn't ask. I used to work with a guy with a gym hand. He has jimping, ain't easy to toot on that wrist, I never asked, and I worked with him over a year. Eventually he did tell me though, that he was born that way. One of his favorite hobbies was pretending to be offended by it. I should try to be offended by it. Sounds like fun. Most people never ask, luckily. How's your job search going? Matherfriker you know how it's going. If I got a job I would have said something by now. Why my last name is different from my brothers and sisters what's it to you damn it. Clearly I have a different father, jackasses. My half sister and I with this. Seriously, why does it feel like no one knows the concept of half siblings? Because they probably don't know any. So thinking they have a different father is not one of the explanations that comes to mind. You wasted that much money on a computer, they say while texting on their phone that costs two thirds as much, and does oh so much less. Until Battlefield 1 is ported to mobile anytime soon, then hit me up. I was recently asked this by somebody who plays PS4 I asked them how much they paid for their last AAA title. And the answer was $80, I'm from Canada. And I said mine was $20 on the Steam sale, that shut them up. What do your tattoos mean? I know I got myself into this mess, but for Christ's sake it's not okay to touch me, because I have ink in my skin and I don't want to talk to you. Touching never okay. Asking about tats, after you know the other person? Totally reasonable. Why did you move so far away from your family? Don't you miss them? Nope. Not everyone has a nice family or parents who are caring, nurturing people. I shouldn't really have to justify that to strangers. Who's that other woman with your mom? Now that it's 2017, and I'm old enough to not care I'm not as ashamed, but as a younger kid having lesbian moms was a huge source of anxiety. Oh it's my dad. Every time I go to Europe, I get at least one sincere and confused variation of, you're American, but you're not fat. Respond with, that's why they made me leave. Any question that starts with as a black man, how do you feel about? I give my opinions on things all the time. I don't want to be the black male voice on something though. As a black man, how do you feel about white people asking you to represent your entire race with your opinions? When I tell people I have Crohn's, they almost always ask me how I found out. I know they're expecting something obvious like my doctor ran a test and it came back Crohn's. Sadly, the answer is poop. I shat in a jar for a few weeks and then had a camera shoved up my butt. 
Crons. What do you like to do for fun? Frickin' suck. What kind of music do you like? That question always puts pressure on me, like I have to stand up to the person's expectations, and then get judged. Yes. People who ask this question also seemingly cannot accept that you genuinely like any slash all genres and aren't narrowly obsessed with one thing and definitely get super judgy slash suspicious about that. I hate anything nosy. Who are you texting? Why are you in such a good mood? Where are you going? I also truly can't stand when people ask me how far, where, or for how long I ran. Come to think of it, I'm just not big on being asked questions in general. Can you show me your mistake? If I did, it would have been right in the first place. It's supposed to be a learning exercise, demonstrating your thought process, so that the teacher can show you what was wrong with your thinking. It's more involved and effective than giving you an X. What's your name? I have a pretty bad speech impediment which results in a stutter and lots of vocals blocks. So whenever I meet a new person and take over 15 seconds to attempt to say my name just staring into the dark abyss of the person asking the question's eyes and watching them become confused. It can be mildly entertaining, but most of the time it's the most awkward 15 second silent stare off ever. What are you doing here? Usually asked when I'm at a store. So the answer to that is pretty freaking obvious. I'm trying to frick those cantaloupes over there. So when are you having kids? You have a graduate degree in X. Why are you here doing Y? Because X can't make a mortgage payment. Why the frick do you think? When I say that my so, and I have been together since 09. So what are you waiting for? Is the most common way people ask why we aren't married with a bunch of kids by now. As if those are things we're obligated to do. So and I have been together 3 years. After only 6 months, a cowalker said I hear wedding bells. And of course people ask when we'll contribute to the overpopulation of our planet. I'd rather adopt dogs. Thank you very much. Next time someone asks, I'm telling them I can't conceive, just to make them feel guilty. What does your tattoo mean? Bruh, it means there's a big ass owl coming out of my chest. How did you get those scars on your arm? Frick off, you know what they are. What are you doing with your life? Are you excited? Bitch, if I'm excited you'll know, and you'll have to tell me to calm down. You're only asking this question because you want me to be more excited than I currently seem to be. I just bought my first house and people won't stop with this question. No, I'm not excited. I'm freaking terrified. Why don't you brush your teeth more? I have dentinogenesis imperfecta. It's a genetic disorder that affects the formation of dentin in tooth development. Simply, it causes rapid wear and tear, discoloration, and easy breakage. I'm a 30 year old man and have impeccable hygiene. I still get massive social anxiety and have pretty big self esteem issues. There's not much to be done about it except for a $40,000 cosmetic surgery. When are you going to have kids? The answer is never. Oh god, I just recently got married and we are seeing all my extended family for the first time later this month. Oh god. Oh god that question is coming isn't it? When will you start trying for kids? Never. I don't want them. Also I had cervical cancer that necessitated removing a large piece of my cervix and it's possible I can't carry to term. I don't want to put myself through that. Where are you going after high school? To whatever college accepts me. It's not like I can see the future. So, how are you? Still clinically depressed, same as yesterday, 